Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Two Old Farts. My name is Chuck. I'm Lou. I'm not sure how good I am today, but I'm here. Yeah, uh, we've had some problems the last few days, and yes, the yes, old sir. old fart couldn't quite hear me, and I thought it was because he's deaf, but it, it turns out it's because my voice is coming across to him garbled. And I thought it was working. And when we recorded our episode on Sunday, I went to try to start to upload it. And I listened to it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is, is this what I sounded like? And this, this guy, he trusts me so much. He says, bring in your mom. Let her listen to see. But that's because you can't hear anything. Oh, man, I'm telling you. You, you're so move. you're so deaf. You put headphones on and you can't hear. That's true. Oh my God! Thursday, wow. I got a woman get these adjusted, and, and the other one's adjusted, and I got some questions for her. See how I can figure out how to use communications better with uh, these hearing aids and stuff. So we'll see. Ooh, hang on. Let me turn off this light. See if I can. That's a little better, I think. No, you're better with the light. Nah. You think so? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Man, it's it's rough trying to do a podcast during the week when you come home from work and you got stuff to do. It's easier on Sunday. Especially when you think it's my fault. Say, I, this time it's not mine. It's on you this time. It is on me. I, I just thought it was because you couldn't hear. We're going we're to have to list that, put that on a list of pet peeves, right? Yeah, so Sunday we did a whole 30-minute episode, and it's this one is still going to be entitled Pet Peeves, but you did some research, so I'm going to let you go first. Well, first off, we'll give a definition. A peeve is an annoyance. And a pet peeve is an annoyance that's nurtured like a pet. It's something someone can never resist complaining about. There are, you know, all kinds like littering, misusing pronunciation. And that's one your mom would always on to me about it. pronunciation, not saying it right. You know, because I still have that Alabama thought process from back in SEAL. And then this one, this one fits you, I'm going to tell you. We talked about this a lot, driving slowly in the fast lane or talking, doing movies. But the most common pet peeves is a mess. Even common spaces, messes or ne neglecting to take out the trash. That fits your mom because she don't want no mess and you better take out the trash or you're going to hear it and she don't, ain't going to slow down on that. Then driving while driving slowly in the passing lane and not letting you merge. That's you. That is 100. Say, when I go someplace with this man, I'm doing this. <laughs> not really. I'm just, just joking. But it is an experience. I laugh more or have as much fun on his driving and all this other stuff as much as we do at the event we're going to. Because he gets so frustrated that it's, and they say they are some stupid people out there that do, does some stupid things. <laughs> then, then work, colleagues who don't follow through, I'm sure this is you too, because we've had some conversation along the lines or your work being overlooked. Meetings, meetings that run long, and that's you too, because you used to complain all, of, even when I was a commander at the DAV chapter. Social media inconsistent let, let, let me interject in there right now. So let me give you all some perspective, people. I am 58 years old, and I was probably the youngest person in the room by at least 20 years. And, and that's being kind of generous. So these old farts, they ain't got nothing else better to do on a Saturday morning. Drink their little coffee and have their little pet peeves talked about. and that. Just talk things to death. And I'm like, the meeting is supposed to be from 10 to 11. It's 11.10, and we still ain't even halfway done with the agenda because everybody's got to stand up and say something and reiterate what the last two, three people just said. 
and I just want to choke the life out of these people. I'm like, didn't you just hear what he said? And he said, and he said, and then at the last minute, are there any questions? So what time are we doing that? And when is it again? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's old people. They got nothing else better to do. They ain't got a job to go back to or something fun on Saturday to go do. This new, this new chapter, I just I joined chapter 114. You'd enjoy it. 67, we eat, and last time they had pizza and, you know, different stuff and things like that. But meeting starts at 7, 8 o'clock, we're through. I've gone to four or five meetings now. I, I can't remember any of them going maybe five minutes after 8. That's it. Got their On gender. a weeknight? Huh? On a weeknight? Yeah, so on Wednesday night, it's the fourth Wednesday uh, of every, you know, of every month. Of the, uh, and it's in Holotus. Yeah, so you want me to get on and drive in traffic all the way down to Holotus on 1604 and then back. With, with yeah. You know how I am about people driving in the fast lane slow. Yeah, in the, in the passing like, But I really and like And I go to bed at 9 o'clock. So, and we're through by 8. Sometimes at five by three at the most, you know. But I really like the chapter. Commander Cortez, he actually used to be at uh, chapter 14. And like Dan and I, he, he just had some reasons to change. And uh, actually, this chapter used to be out by Lackland, and they moved it over to the Holotus. And it's in a community care center right across from uh, uh, the high school there in uh, Lotus. But anyway, and the other was social media, inconsistent posts at home, bedmate who takes too much of the blanket and all that kind of stuff. Leaving the common spaces messy is 63% of the complaints. Colleagues complaining about work of specific colleagues, 53%. And it goes on and on and on, okay? Oh, I believe it. I, I I can I can sense some of that myself at work. But yeah, you hit the nail on the head. In Texas, ladies and gentlemen, if you ain't willing to commit a felony, do not get in that fast lane. Yep. And if you see two or three cars on your bumper in the fast lane, you need to get over because you're holding us up. Ninety-two percent of drivers have a drive-in pet peeve. That's out of a survey of about 2,000 U.S. customers. 50% of motorists say they had road rage. I feel like I could road rage. I feel like I could kill somebody. Almost all drivers have at least one pet peeve caused by fellow motorists. 92% texting while driving uh, tops the list at 54%. Drivers going slow in the passing lane, 44%. Those who don't let you merge, 41%. And at speed, 50% of the motor say slow drivers are more annoying than fast ones. That's true. I don't have a problem with people in the merging aspect of it because if I remember driver's ed correctly, when you are merging onto the highway, it's up to you to gauge your speed to either get in front of the cars or get behind the cars. They don't have to let you in. I agree. The only, the only thing about the immersion that irritates me is when you don't use your turn signal. If well, you're if you're merging on, they know you're coming to the left. If you're going to change lanes, put your turn signal on. Let somebody know. Because if, if we're kind of close and, and I see you want to get over, I'll just slow down a little bit and let you go ahead and get in because I want you to have that courtesy for me when I get ready to do it. That. That's the only pet peeve about changing lanes that bothers me. Uh, it's not using turn signals. Well, yeah, you would think they were optional the way people um, economize with using them. But yeah, speaking of merging and changing lanes. So, yes, by law, you're supposed to use the turn signal. But really what the turn signal does is, like you just said, it lets everyone around you know what your intentions are. I have my turn signal on. And it looks like I want to go into that lane. So if you are the driver and you're supposed to be checking your mirrors every like 10 or 15 seconds, so you should be looking left, looking right, looking center. Hopefully you can see the 
and then you can speed up or slow down to let them over. But more importantly, like you were talking about merging at the beginning, when you are coming up to a point where you know cars are getting ready to merge on, it's probably the smart thing to do to get over a lane and let all of those cars get in onto the lane at speed. Because all you end up doing is just slowing everybody down. And then, then you get annoyed because they're trying to get it. And then you finally change lanes. Why can't you just do that a quarter mile back before you get there? Thank you very much. Whenever, if I'm going someplace, I know 90% of the time, down the road, half mile down or three quarter of a mile down, whatever, I need to make that, get over to the right so I can make that right turn or get into the left so I can make, you know. And I, I think that's what you're always saying whenever we're out driving about looking ahead. Two or three moves ahead, you should know what you're doing and always look for an exit or, you know, right. an out. You should never box yourself in. Always try to find an out when you're on the road. And, and if you're checking the mirrors all the time, you'll you'll pretty much have that. And that that goes to my pet peeve about, like you said, changing lanes, turn signals, uh, the fast lane, texting while driving. If you get into the car, your sole focus and purpose in life is to operate that machine safely and get from point A to point B. That's it. If you have a phone call or a text that needs to occur, get off the road, pull over, pull into a parking lot, pull into the breakdown lane on the highway, make your call, take your text, get back on the highway. Everybody will be happier and more thankful. You know, and the in the other podcast, we were talking about one of the things that we used to do when I was back home back in the day. But those days are gone. It's literally not possible to do that pretty much anymore unless you're out on a really country road. There's not much traffic. And that's you used to like pull out. If someone kind of got up pretty close to you, you just kind of pull over a little bit halfway on the road and halfway on the side of the road and let them pass. You throw your hand up, wave, and keep on going. But it's kind of hard to do that now because uh, most of the roads are such heavy traffic that it just doesn't allow to do that. But you know what? You can say thank you when somebody lets you in or does something. You know. Yeah, but you do see it out in the country. You you would have to get out into the country country and like miles away from the big city. And you'll see it, you know, old farm truck pull out in front of you, you know, about a half a mile ahead. And you're like, dang it. But as soon as you get up on their bumper, they just pull over to the right, roll down their window, and they just come on. You know, and, and I, I really truly believe there's more courteous drivers out there than probably what we like to believe. Yesterday, I was, you know, the stop and go here at the corner of the house. One of the things that, that one of my pet peeves is when you pull up to that, you're going to either turn left. When I leave my house, you're going to turn left on the collab or you're going to turn right. Well. Right on that corner, there's a lot of businesses like stop and go on the right hand side. Then there's another little gas station, whole bunch of stuff on the left hand side. Well, don't block the entrances into those businesses because people turn off of labor or going to turn in there, or people want to leave those businesses to get on the street. So I'm in there waiting to try to get on to uh, Les Harris to talk to turn on the labor. Well, this actually it was a couple, a young couple in a, in a white car blocked the lane and they saw me then they started, they backed up to allow me to get in the lane that's what you that's courtesy that's you know somebody taught those kids the right thing and how to how to do because sometimes i don't think we really teach you know you go to a driving school what are they going to teach you they're going to teach you how to drive and pass the test you know and you know and pass the test they don't probably teach you a lot on driving courtesies and stuff like that but, I, you know, I think that depends on the teacher, too. Well, yes, it does. But so, but anyway, going back to these notes, fewer drivers admit to being guilty of pet, of pet peeves. Just over 27% said they never committed uh, any of the illicit pet peeves. You know, 19% said they, they don't text while they're driving and not notice a green light now. 19% emergency. So that, that's probably not true, but 
many are judging drivers by their vehicles. Did you know that? I did never thought about it. Three quarters, 75% of drivers say certain types of vehicles make them more wary of another driver's behavior. I got I got a joke that'll kind of illuminate that for you. What is the difference between a BMW and a porcupine? A porcupine has its pricks on the outside. Okay. You will find jokes and statistically a lot of people will say that some of the worst drivers that they are around, aggressive, stupid, whatever you want to call it, are BMW drivers. Yeah. And some of the slowest drivers I've seen on the highway drive Teslas. I don't know why. They they just they go the speed limit or yeah. go slower. Yeah. And motorcycles 38% Sports cars, 31%. Pickup trucks, 25%. That surprises me. Uh, hey, pickup pick truck pick driver here. Pickup driver here. I think people would think people in pickup trucks or trucks would have a... Then another 24% admitted to passing judgment based on the makes of other vehicles. You know, stuff like that. But that's it's kind of interesting. I try not to judge anybody by what they drive. I, I never you know? thought about it either. According to this survey, that's what they do. The 23% of Americans say they're usually angered while driving. 50% admit they have had road rage. That's surprising. Well, I guess it's not when you listen to the news and, and, and you, some of the instances you see about road rage and, and shootings and things like that, you know. Uh, men are more likely than women to experience road rage, 56% versus 43%. Gen Generation Zs, 62%, and millennials, 59%, are almost prone to have road rage. Really? Yeah. Did not know that. I'm not. I'm not too sure. So, help me clarify, Generation Z and millennials, I mean, what? Okay, so I always wanted to equate you and mom as born uh, in uh, baby boomers, but technically you're not. Mom, I think might be. Technically, you're not. You're you're not a baby boomer. I think it goes from forty five to sixty four. Now, when I was growing up, it went to nineteen sixty two. Then it moved to sixty three. But these are just guidelines. There's no scientific mathematical it is a hard this date and that date. So Gen X is what they say now is 1964 to 1982, 83 time frame. Gen Y, aka now the millennials, is from that early to mid 80s up to the late 90s, I think. Let me see. So it's, see, it says from 77 to 95. So they're, they're like shortchanging Gen X. Gen X age range, they're saying, is now it's up 1965 to 1980. It's like, man, they keep shrinking us. It went from 62 to 64. Now it's 1965. But what? I, so, so anyway, boomers, it says is 1955. This is a, that's a hokey um, website. Uh, let's see, Pew Research. Let's see what they say. Pew Research. Let me put my glasses on. 1928 to 1945, they're saying, is the silent generation. They're saying boomers are 46 to 64. Gen X, they're saying is 65 to 80. Millennials is 81 to 96, and Gen Z is 97 to 2012. So what would make these younger generation of people have more road rage? That's what I don't understand, because they're very passive people. They're, they're very happy, happy-go-lucky. They don't seem to have a lot of hang-ups or anger issues. I, I don't get it. That's... that's... 
Maybe maybe they're the silent generation. I don't know. No, you're the silent generation. Yeah. And then uh, half of those who've had road rage said this caused them to drive more aggressively. In fact, 50% of the drivers said they've used obscene language or hand gestures toward other drivers, while 57% have used their horns to scold others on the road. That's you. That's me. That's what a horn is for. Pretty interesting stuff, huh? Yeah, it is, but that's what a horn is for. Do I? I said that is what you use a horn for, to get people's attention. I don't have a problem using a horn. No. I try not to flip anybody off anymore, but if I do go around you, I will do this to you. I will point, you know, go to the other lane. But all talking about road rage here lately, that just seems, you know, and sometimes I think the media overplays most of everything we do. There could be some of that, but I think it's I think it's getting more pervasive too. I think as as a society, I think we're getting angrier, we have less tolerance, and you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of reasons why those things occur, but I. I know because of some of the things I see that road rage causes, I'm just, and I learned that from granddaughter number three. I used to pick her up at UTSA in, in the afternoon and drive her home and stuff like that. We just get in the right lane because she's, she's real nervous anywhere about driving. So we're just getting on the, stay on the access road. You know what? You know, over a period of time, I realize it doesn't take me that much longer to get from UTSA to the house than it did if I was up on the highway. Because up on the highway, you stop and go, and, and typically on the access road, you don't have as many stops. It's some strange stuff. Yep, I agree. Did you hear about that young cadet who... Um died at the Air Force Academy. She was 19 years old. She died of uh, complications from the flu or pneumonia. I just saw it, but I haven't read about it. So. Yep. She, she died of complications from pneumonia, some kind of a rare infection that she got. So there's probably going to be a big, big stink after the fact about this at the uh, at the academy, and and rightly so. If they are not allowing the cadets to to get the medical treatment that they need, uh, that's a problem. Well, I'm not so sure that they don't allow. I think that there's probably the communication issue and that fear factor that when you're in basic training, you don't say things because you just want to get through. Right. So I'm, I didn't say it was. I'm just saying if it is. And and it could be probably a little bit of both. Yep. And, and, and it's, the yeah. other thing, we got people that are still out there suffering from Hurricane Helene. And then we got another Hurricane Milton that's just getting ready to hit Florida in, in a day. So there's there's a lot of stuff going on. And this one is getting ready to uh, Milton. It sounds like it's going to be worse than Helene. Not so much the wind is up, but the uh, the waves. They're talking about what? Fifteen foot, fifteen foot storm surge. Yeah, that that means fifteen feet above sea level. That water is going to come onto shore. And just watching some of the damage I've seen on on Helene, they still got stuff piled up. You know, all that damage is now. You got more coming through, and it's going to spread us. Uh, I, I just pray and. and Got to give out a shout out to my good friend Tony Lamarca. I don't know if you remember him from Japan or not. I I do. He was uh he came over with Maynard. He was with me and Maynard when we were at uh, Maxwell, and he's down in Georgia. Last time I heard from him about two days ago, he was still without power and uh, cell service. 
Yeah, it's like that in Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina. It's pretty bad, and there's people out there that are still suffering. So find some charities. I plan on doing some research and finding a charity and, and donating to you know get some of these people some help. You know, there are a lot of people who've donated their time in helicopters to help ferry supplies out to these people that can't get anywhere because the roads are closed down. The people are using horses and mules to get supplies to these people because it is extremely rural out there. And I was just watching on uh, on a show this morning, this one guy that, I forgot how many helicopters in that group. I think he said like 15. But anyway, they're talking about this one area in North Carolina, the guy was sent out there with a big mirror. He had broken the mirror on his medicine cabinet or in his bathroom, was out shining it, and they just happened to see the reflection off of it. And there was a couple of people, it was a real small area where it was at, that had a really difficult time. And thank goodness they were in a type of helicopter where they could get down. So there's a lot of a lot of good folks are trying to help people out. I know this morning. And we, need, and we need to try to help them out as well. Absolutely. This morning I had bought some stuff, and one of the things was to, to donate money. I think it was an HEB yesterday, I think, that you could go like one, five, ten, whatever you want to do. So it's not going to hurt us. No, it's not. Oh, and, and those people need it. And, and if you and, donate at HEB, you know it's going to get to the people. Yes. And this morning I was also watching this one guy who was asked, do you have uh, flood insurance? He said, yes. But talking about Florida, he doesn't have the surge protection. So if you don't have the flood, you don't get paid. Now, you know, you have those surge walls that come in and do the damage, but that's not the same thing as a, as the flood. It's not covered by flood insurance. That just, that, that just, that just doesn't they get make you. sense. To me. Yeah. They, that's how they get you. Yeah. So, anyway, we'll just keep all these people in our prayers and do what we can to help them, and every dollar it will help. It will. Yeah, so. We just have to encourage people, and, but I want to give a shout out to my friend Tony the Market, and I think my friend Daniel King is still in that Florida area. I got to check on him too. I think I told you he and I went to school together. We graduated together. Yep, you did. Played football together and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway. looking at the at the clock, we're getting up on thirty minutes. Yeah, let's give a shout out to you, Aunt Carolyn, and uh, to How's our, Uncle Bobby. Uncle Bobby. In fact, I took him to see a doctor today. He had a, a follow up appointment from the hospital visit with an endonologist or whatever you call that. But he's doing pretty good. He was just he called me yesterday and uh, asked me if I was doing anything. He said he's felt pretty good, but every now and then he gets a little tired. So I'll be there. What time do you need me to pick you up? We're going to do that, and then he's got another appointment next week. He was in good spirits and feeling pretty good, so and he's looking pretty good. Give a shout out to him, and okay. And uh, our your two cousins, my nieces in California. Where in fact, all of my nieces in California, and cousins uh, Jessica, and all those. Aunt Bertie's daughter. Yeah, and you know, I think I think cousin Jimmy is uh, has been affected by Helene. I thought I saw some pictures of him and his son bathing in the creek. Yep, I got to reach out to him and see how he's doing because he's in uh, he's not too far from Columbus. I think it's about 30, 40 miles from Columbus in that area. So, J and J Glass Company. So, if you're in that area and you need some glass work. Go see J and J Glass because they'll treat you right. All righty. Well, you have a good one. And you do the same old fart. See how we make this thing better. All right, y'all take care, everybody. See y'all next week. Bye, guys. See you down the road.